So this video is really for those that keep their Pro Tools system up to date. And you do that by either paying the annual fee that it costs to keep it updated, you pay that once a year, or you subscribe to their subscription plan. So my question to you is, do you feel good about the cost associated with keeping that system up to date? In other words, are they providing valuable updates to that particular digital audio workstation, or are they just providing bug fixes, or is it somewhere in the middle? I don't think we should ever, ever, ever have to pay for bug fixes. I think it's absolute extortion doing that. That said, if I'm going to pay, I'm going to expect compelling, now listen to this, compelling new features. Now, over the last three or four years, there have been a couple of compelling features, in my opinion. You may find that there's a lot more of them based on your workflow, or you may find, I ain't got jack, baby. I'm spending all this money, and what the crap am I getting for it other than to say I use, I'm Ray up here. Well, no, you're not. Um, so, so this is a question you got to ask yourself, especially, and I do mean this, especially if you are contemplating moving to Pro Tools or getting into this the very first time. And of course you've heard the name Pro Tools. So therefore you feel that's what you should do. I would urge you caution. Now, let it be said, I'm a fan of Pro Tools. I enjoy the Pro Tools workflow. I have used it more than any other digital audio workstation on the planet, and I've also criticized it more than any digital audio workstation on the planet. Both have been worth it at the time. They were valued and they were correct at the time. So I've gone back and forth between this love-hate relationship, and it's only when they brought back the ability to buy Perpetual again and keep that up to date. Now, the difference being today, if you let your Perpetual uh, plan lapse and you wait two or three years, from what I understand, you can get back on board for that $100. Now, that said, if you notice what Avid is doing this coming May, okay, it is already by far and it's not even remotely close. Pro Tools is by far the most expensive digital audio workstation to maintain and operate on the planet. The next down in the competition is a long way down in the cost. Now that would make you think that it's simply the best digital audio workstation. And I hate to break it to all of you out there. I don't care which digital audio station you settled on. I have learned practically every one of them and own practically every one of them. So I feel like I can say that at least based upon, let's just say my level of expertise as an example. And so that is, there is no major difference. You can get whatever you need done on any digital audio workstation that anybody tells you differently, flat out just ignore them. They're full of crap. Now, there may be a couple of little things that you can do on one that you can't do on the other, but I guarantee you, if you're creative, you will figure out how to do it on every digital audio workstation. It just may or may not be as seamless as it may be, and that brand new feature that just popped up in this digital audio workstation, but yet is likely to catch up to yours in a few months. So that said, where do you place your value? You've got anywhere from Reaper, which I think to get into that is like less than $100. I think it's $60 or $80, something like that. And the people who use Reaper absolutely love it. And everyone swears by the fact that if you're coming from Pro Tools, it's the best one to go to, to be able to simulate that Pro Tools workflow. I would argue that Studio One is also in many ways just as easy to transition to. But you've got Reaper is the least expensive. You've got uh, FL Studio, okay, you got FL Studio, which is not arguably not a full-fledged digital audio workstation, but if it does what you need it to do, it has free updates for life. You buy it once, you own it, you never have to spend another penny. It's the only digital audio workstation out there I know quite like that. Reaper may be very similar, I'm just not sure. Then you've got Logic. Logic's only 200 bucks, and it's years and years and years before they come up with a new one. 
So what an incredible bang for the buck logic is. And then, of course, you've got Cubase. Now, Cubase is probably, without a doubt, the hardest to learn, but it is a powerfully rich, feature-rich digital audio workstation. Very, very, very powerful. But if you're coming from Pro Tools, you're going to struggle getting into that, which is why I recommend a course, okay? And then, of course, I mentioned before Studio One. I'm a huge fan of Studio One. It's very easy to wrap your head around and get into. I have used Digital Performer, but it's been quite a few years since I've used it, so I really can't speak intelligently about that one. Plus, there's lots of folks out there that love the Harrison, uh, what is it, the 32 bus or something like that. They love that workflow. That primarily only works if you're primarily working in audio from what I understand. I could be wrong about that. So when you look at all these other digital audio workstations, every one of them give you an inexpensive route to upgrade and you only feel the need to upgrade when the features you see are compelling. It's quite typical for me to skip one or two updates and wait for the next one to get everything to that point, unless it's something super compelling. Well, guess what? In some of the others, it's not that easy, and the cost to jump back on board is more expensive. Avid has made it somewhat easier, giving you the ability to jump back on without having to repurchase all over again. But the fact that they even did all the price gouging and literally the, the bottom line is they ripped all of their customer base completely off for at least 10 years. I mean, just utterly ripped all of us off by extortion money that it's quickly proven to me has not been worth it. Now that said, Avid, quit raising your prices for goodness sakes. You're already the most expensive one out there. And primarily most of your updates are bug fixes. Your fault, not ours. Why are we paying for your mistakes? Bottom line is we have a lot of choices today. And what I encourage all of you to do is think long and hard about where your return on investment, you know, that ROI, that very common business term, that if I invest this much money, what am I going to get from it? And is it like, you know, a car with 300,000 miles on it that's like a Ford or something where you spend a thousand here and then a thousand there and then two thousand? You're going to keep throwing good money after bad. And all you're going to do is basically keep that car running. But if that money were spent on something else, you'd have a more reliable car and it would be a non-issue. I guess that cuts to the chase of the discussion. Now I'm going to do my shameless plug. I have a relationship with Sweetwater and I'm part of their affiliate program, which means if you decide to purchase anything from Sweetwater, if you use the link that I placed down in the description down below to this video, as well as my other videos, and you go on that link to Sweetwater, whatever you put in your cart and purchase, I will get a tiny percentage of that. So if you want to continue to support this channel and support me, I would appreciate it. I've said it before and I'll keep saying it. You don't make any money really off views. You just don't. So you got to find other ways of supplementing your income without getting bought out by people. That's really my goal. I don't plan to ever get bought out, okay? Um, so Sweetwater's never told me what to do or say. They have made it clear to me they would never dream of doing that. I have too much respect for content creators. And I believe that. And so far, they've lived up to that. So if you want to help me, help me. Use that link, go purchase. There's a few other vendors down there. If you want to purchase from them, then purchase from them. Again, I'll get a small cut of that. So do me a favor, leave some comments down below. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me where you are currently today. Uh, if you're going to stick with Pro Tools or you're going to move to something else or you're going to start communicating with Avid and tell them either stop gouging the prices from us or we're all going to leave you, which is what every single one of you should do. That's my advice to all of you. But until next time, I hope every one of you have a great day. Bye-bye. Whatever you do, just make music. Bye.